Hey -o. Hello everyone, and welcome to yet another episode of Type Moon Character Showcase. If you don't know by now, this is a series where I take a character from any Nosverse work, and I tell you all about them. First, I go over their character and backstory, then I go over their abilities, and finish off with my personal thoughts. Character choices will not be limited by obscurity at all as I want to share to all you viewers the sheer amount of amazing and interesting characters that you either don't know everything about, or are just unaware of their origin because of how obscure they might be. For this episode, we are dipping into the latter category as I promised before, as only like 20 people I know on the non-Japanese internet actually know what Notes is, which is really sad all things considered. Anyway, this episode, we'll be taking a look at the little talked about Gun God also known as Godo. For those who don't know, Gun God is the main character of Notes, which was one of Nasu's very first works, and one of the stories that helped build the Nasuverse as we know it today. Yep, we owe all of this to a story that only a minuscule fraction of the total global fanbase actually knows exists. Guys, can we respect the original story a bit more? Regardless, Gun God is the protagonist of this story. And as such, it's my job to talk about him, so talk about him, I shall. Starting with the character and backstory. Notes takes place in a far off dystopian apocalyptic future in the Nasuverse where Gaia has already died and had called to the other planets to help rid humanity off its dead corpse. In response, the planets sent their strongest creatures that represent their wills to enact their own will, the Aristoteles, also known as Ultimate Ones, or Types. And yes, Type Moon is one of these Aristoteles. I bet you thought Type Moon was just a company name, didn't you? Nah, he's actually a character all on his own, but we'll talk about him later. During this age, a normal man was born in what was at the time referred to as the West Continent. As he was growing up, Type Jupiter was constantly letting down attacks on Earth, assumingly killing the rest of his family while he was the only one who survived. During this time, he would visit the region of Atlassia and dig up a handgun known as the Black Barrel, also referred to as Longinus. The Black Barrel was a conceptual weapon capable of giving the concept of a finite life onto immortal creatures, as well as disintegrate any form of grain or ether that comes into contact with it. Grain is essentially the element most prevalent in space. Other elements include water, fire, wind, all that kind of stuff. Grain is a toxic particle to normal humans. And unfortunately, the Earth began to allow grain into its atmosphere ever since its death. Since then, the Earth's atmosphere and air has stockpiled an insane amount of it, and most of humanity has evolved to be able to live in these conditions. This evolution gave birth to two new species of humans, Liners and A-Rays. We'll talk about those species in another Type Moon character showcase, as it's quite the long story and is more relevant to another character in Notes. All you need to know right now is that this man was not one of these modified people, and was in fact one of the only remaining normal humans on the planet, meaning he had to take medication and think about his body in order to survive in the green landscape. The man eventually learned how to shoot the gun well to fight against the invading Aristoteles in order to avenge his family, while not knowing what his weapon truly was nor the power it held. He would later participate in the bird drop, which was an operation to intercept and destroy Type Venus before it could attack Earth. In the mission, his plane was the last one in the air, and in this moment, he took out the Black Barrel despite the harsh conditions of the planet and shot Type Venus, which actually managed to bring it down, putting it into a state somewhere between that of sleep and death. This action gave him a reputation with his peers and allies, which eventually ended up giving him the nickname Gun God, for shooting down an Aristoteles with his gun alone. This actually became his known name, as he had lost his original name a very long time ago. Since he shot down Type Venus, a monitoring base was put on its corpse known as the Leaves of Yggdrasil, as it sat between the wings of the dead Type Venus, which are called the World Trees, as they resembled two enormous trees. It turned out that life was able to flourish on Type Venus's corpse, and over time it became one of the more hospitable places on Earth, turning into a town. He eventually moved to the location due to its ease of living and takes up a job of hunting angels. What the angels are, I'll also explain in another episode of Type Moon Character Showcase, because that is also another long story on its own and is once again more relevant to another character. But basically, he has to hunt down a total of 20 of them per day just to get by with living on bare necessities. 
Gun God could have been protected by other humans as a rare species and would have been given a Karen lifestyle, rather than living this difficult life. But he declined, as Gun God was ultimately a free man who didn't want to be limited by others, and live life by his own accord. He befriends an Eire who takes a romantic interest in him. Eires usually avoid such actions as they believe it is below them to interact with species that are unable to strengthen their own. However, this Eire is a rebellious one, who believes that Eires aren't close enough to the angels that they claim they are in the first place. Instead, she and Gun God often get together to have drinks and chat, as she finds his thoughts and mindset on life far more interesting than anyone else. Gun God eventually comes home to find what seems to be an actual true angel living in his apartment, waiting for him while playing his deceased sister's guitar. He tries to drive the angel out, but fails miserably and begrudgingly lets her live with him. The angel is known as Vivi, and at first she is a heavy burden to Gun God as he has to take down another 10 more angels in order to feed her and she has basically no life skills, with nothing outside of a guitar that she cannot extract any form of audible ecstasy from. However, as they live together, she learns more about human practices and becomes more adept at doing things, outside of playing the guitar to any modicum of decency, and becomes sort of a caretaker to him. He is at first distant to her and finds her a pain in the ass, but eventually grows to appreciate her company. Before Vivi lived with him, he was driven by survival and the stress of the current situation to live with little actual emotion as he was never able to experience good things. However, since Vivi kept in company, he finds life more peaceful and enjoyable despite how annoying she can be. When Type Saturn begins to attack the town, he is enlisted to fight it due to his reputation of killing Type Venus. Before he leaves the house, Vivi reveals that she was actually a manifestation of Type Venus given form to by the thoughts of people and concepts of Earth, taking the form of how humans perceived Type Venus. She reveals to him about the things that she's learned since then, and how she wishes she was a real angel instead of what she was. She talks to him about the unfortunate nature of the situation, to which he remarks that it was ultimately humanity's fault for not accepting the situation and continuing to fight, while Vivi thought that the Aristoteles and Gaia were wrong instead. Gun God muses about it and accepts it, talking about his relationship with Vivi and how he's grown to love her, which surprises her since she wasn't even human. He retorts by saying that he was one of the last humans to begin with, so such a thing ultimately meant little. He departs from the house after their conversation, and goes out to fight against Type Saturn along with his A-Ray friend. In the battle, his friend is severely injured, but Gun God saves her. However, his plane becomes severely damaged and begins rising up to the red sky where grain is present in large quantities. The two have one final conversation, where Gun God reveals that as a kid, he wanted to be a hero. Sound familiar? And wanted to at least have a cool looking death, one by himself, putting up the best empty smile he ever made. His friend respects his wishes and leaves the plane, while Gun God makes one last attempt to fix his AI. As his eyes begin to close, he realizes that while his answer to living used to be revenge, his answer had changed since then. Meanwhile, his sister's guitar continues to send the room with the fake angel. Gun God is one of the last, if not the absolute last human on Earth. But ironically, as a person, he doesn't really feel like one. A lot of his emotions are fake and just a pretense, as he experienced too little happiness in life to truly know the difference between sadness and happiness, and little is actually known about his early days. He used to fight for an empty revenge for his family and to simply live for another day, but he also chooses not to receive support from others in order to put some meaning into his life and efforts. He tries to force a smile sometimes and most often fails. However, once Vivi came into his life, he knew what annoyance was, and ironically that helped him give him peace in mind. He would take out his annoyance on the angels that he hunted as they had a similar appearance to her, before realizing that he actually did care for Vivi in the end. Where even hinted at the end, Vivi helped him change his view on life and why he wanted to live in the first place, even if it's never revealed what that change became. All being said, Gun God is a unique character, who doesn't really develop as much as he has death. Like a really large amount of things from Notes, you can tell that traits and ideas from him have helped inspire other things in the Nasuverse, like his emotionless pretense being similar to Shiki Ryogi, and his childhood ideal of being a hero present in Chiro. In fact, you can say that Kiritsugu Emiya is basically a more refined version of him. As they both have a handgun that counters a specific thing, they both wanted to be heroes as a kid, both have some serious emotional issues, and they both wear black. So, next time you think of Kiritsugu, remember that there was another Type Moon protagonist that gave rise to him. In terms of abilities, well, he doesn't actually have any special abilities. 
He's one of the last, if not the last remaining normal human, and is thus one of the weakest remaining creatures on the planet. He cannot eat the same food of A-rays and liners as they are too high in grain or nutrient content for him to consume. However, as I said before, in the lands of Atlassia, he dug up the handgun known as Black Barrel, which is also known as Longinus. Black Barrel is a conceptual weapon of natural lifespan, and is able to imprint the concept of a natural lifespan onto any known being, even immortals. It ignores any form of defensive parameters or outside rules, and can even affect creatures without the concept of death like Aristoteles. Its main strength is that it destroys all form of grain that comes into contact with it, meaning the species of the current earth cannot even touch it, as they have implemented grain into their own lifestyle. The more grain that one has in their body, the more deadly the black barrel will be. In the world of notes, grain is pretty much everywhere and every creature has it, especially creatures from space like Aristoteles. This means that the black barrel is as powerful as a weapon could possibly get in the dystopian world of notes, making Gun God a force to be reckoned with in that world for being the only one able to wield it. For personal thoughts, I do like Gun God. He's a middle-aged rough man type character and having the main character be a grown man rather than a teenager is always a nice departure from the norm. He doesn't really have a massive character arc or anything, it's mostly just about him becoming more at peace and his change in viewpoint of life. He doesn't have the same extent of exploration to his unique psych like with Ryogi, nor does he have the complete sense of relatability like Tono, and unlike Shiro, he doesn't develop an insane bunch. Overall, from a writing standpoint, he doesn't have the same level of death as other protagonists of Type Moon, but you know what, that's fine. For such a short story and for when he was created, I don't think that's much of a problem if at all. Just something to note about the character. I would absolutely like to see a movie or something of notes where we would get to see more of Gun God and the rest of the mythos of the world, because there are a lot of things in notes that simply aren't explored due to its obscurity. Then again, I can say that for quite a few things inside the Nasuverse outside of the Holy Grail War. But as of now, Gun God is a solid protagonist in a unique early idea of a story, and if nothing else, he helped pave the way to many other amazing protagonists that otherwise would not be the same. Anyway, that concludes my Type Moon character showcase on Gun God. I hope you enjoyed this video, taking a look at a more underground series of the Nasuverse, and I guarantee you that this won't be the last video I'll make covering notes. Regardless, I hope you'll continue to watch this series if you're interested in them, and I hope these videos help you want to explore the Nasuverse outside of what most people know. Whatever you do, it's time to take my leave. So I hope to see you in the next episode of Type Moon Character Showcase. Farewell.